the sea, once it casts its spell, holds one in its net of wonder forever. Jacques Cousteau. The ocean remains one of Earth's most unexplored frontiers. We know more about the surface of the moon than a world residing on our own planet. It is probably this very reason why I am drawn to this ecosystem more so than others. And I have the Kip Aquarium at the Houston Zoo to thank for opening my curiosity. We're going to take a dive down to see a couple of its residents, from beautiful to dangerous, strange and unique. Let's have a look and see what we can find. We'll start with the most colorful of the ocean ecosystems, the reefs. Reefs are teeming with all sorts of colorful and unique fish, from surgeon fish to the countless number of angelfish. Reefs play a huge role in the oceanic environment. While it provides a safe haven for fish and serves as the building block for the cycle of life in the ocean, it serves us as well. Reef formations protect our coastlines by reducing the power of the waves hitting the coast. Very helpful when dealing with storms, floods, and coastal erosion. Sadly, we are the culprits in these ecosystems disappearing as well. With an abundance of fish comes the possibility of overfishing, and some methods can result in catastrophic damage that could take decades to recover, if the reefs grow back at all. If we are to survive, we must remain vigilant and aware of the further damage, or risk losing not only a beautiful ecosystem, but quite possibly a valuable human resource. One of the reef's most well-known residents, the clownfish, comes in many different forms. Here are at least four species of clownfish, yellow striped maroon, tomato, yellowtail, and pink skunk clownfish. In a bit, you will also see the ocellaris, the most well-known of the clownfish. You may be wondering why these fish can just swim up to an anemone swim right through it, and not feel any of its stinging effects. Yes, anemones are in fact animals and not plants. And just like all Cnidaria, the family that also includes jellyfish, they contain powerful stinging cells to immobilize and consume their prey. The clownfish, however, have a secret to combat said stinging. They secrete a mucus in their bodies that protects them from the anemone's stinging cells. These fish depend on the anemones for protection, food, and shelter. And in turn, the fish clean the anemones of bacteria and other pests, forming one of nature's most well-known symbiotic relationships. Clownfish also hold one of the more compelling biological secrets known to the world. All clownfish are sequential hermaphrodites, meaning they all begin life as males, and when they mature, they become females. However, only the dominant male and female can reproduce through external fertilization. Should the dominant female die, the largest and most aggressive male then becomes the breeding female, and every subsequent fish moves up the chain to continue the reproductive cycle. However, not all is safe in the reefs as predators dwell nearby. The laced moray eel, a swift and dangerous predator of the reef. Despite its appearance to snakes, the eel, like all others in its order, is in fact a species of fish. its slender body and quick swimming form, it is a formidable predator, able to maneuver through the reef in search of its prey of small fish, crab, and cephalopods, using their powerful and blunt teeth to crush and devour, and in some cases, deliver a painful bite to anyone that strays too close. The 
two most venomous fish on earth, the stonefish and the red lionfish. Both inhabiting the waters of the Indo-Pacific region, the venom of both isn't used for immobilizing prey when hunting, but as their self-defense mechanism against predators and other threats. The red lionfish faces its attacker in an upside down position when threatened, positioning its dorsal spines towards the threat. Despite its venomous dorsal fins, it is a very beautiful fish, and it is its striking appearance that leads to further problems not only to the fish itself, but also leads to potential catastrophic environmental problems. The lionfish, with its appearance, is a very popular fish for amateur aquarium owners. Until that is, the fish has grown to its full size. Growing up to a foot in length and weighing up to three pounds, it is far larger than any typical aquarium fish kept as pets. That causes aquarists to find the easiest method of ridding themselves of the problem, releasing it into a non-native habitat. With that, the red lionfish has now become an invasive species in the Atlantic coast and parts of the Caribbean, wiping out local populations of fish and shrimp of the area, their preferred prey. Fortunately, residents have found an alternative to saving the reefs in the aforementioned areas, by catching lionfish and serving them for human consumption. Stonefish, however, is the most toxic fish in the sea, and deaths are not uncommon when it comes to this fish. Armed with 13 deadly, fang-like dorsal spines, each equipped with two venom sacs, the stonefish's defense is impeccable. 18 milligrams of venom is all it takes to potentially kill a human, most cases of stings being that the fish was stepped on due to the fish's equally impeccable camouflage for which its name derives from. In normal circumstances, the fish uses its camouflage to lie in wait for any small, unsuspecting fish to pass, and gobbles it up with lightning quick speed. A slipper lobster, a very strange looking crustacean, and an animal I had personally never heard of until visiting this specimen in the aquarium. While it does share phylum residence with its clawed counterparts, they are not a true lobster, and can be found at depths of up to 1600 feet deep. The lobster comes equipped with two sets of antenna. The thin blue ones are used to scope its surroundings. The others, which believe it or not, are the flattened plates in front, are used to locate and dig up its food source, worms and mollusks. Those sharp legs also assist in prying open any tough shells they find to eat. One may think it has no protection from predators, as it lacks the claws of its true lobster cousins, but its extremely thick carapace and camouflage more than make up for it, burying itself in the sand or simply grasping onto a nearby rock and laying motionless. Finally, we reach our last spotlighted species, 
the green sea turtle. Found in most of the world's oceans, particularly in the Pacific and Atlantic, it gets its name not from its shell, which is black with shades of brown, but from its skin color. In some ways, also fitting its name, this turtle is also the most herbivorous of the sea turtles, feeding mostly on seagrass and algae. Strangely, as juveniles, they are more carnivorous, as young turtles feed on anything from fish eggs to crustaceans, and only reach their more herbivorous stage once they mature into adults. This particular specimen is fairly small, as it can weigh up to 700 pounds at full size. The males being slightly larger than females, also having a longer tail and longer claws on the front flippers. The fish in the tank actually represents a true symbiotic relationship you'll see in the ocean, as turtles in a coral reef ecosystem provide the fish with food as a result of the algae, barnacles, and parasites the turtle may carry in its shell and flippers. In turn, it keeps the turtles clean and improves their overall health. An interesting characteristic of the turtle is its hatching process. Incubation temperature has a lot to do in determining how quickly the hatching process is and the sex of the turtles, almost exactly as the American alligator's egg development stage. Warm sites above 86 degrees Fahrenheit favor the development of females, while nesting sites below 86 degrees Fahrenheit favor development of males. Sadly, the green sea turtle, along with all other species of sea turtles, are endangered but there is hope in saving the species with human intervention. The Houston Zoo has an amazing sea turtle rescue program where they take in young, sick, and injured turtles, nurse them back to health, and release them back into the ocean, giving them a fresh start on life again. As these guys, along with all other species of sea turtles, have a continuous lifelong battle for survival. Well guys, I do hope you enjoyed one last walkthrough into the Kip Aquarium. While it is gone now, you can still enjoy coral reef fish and also freshwater fish at the Houston Zoo inside of the Natural Encounters exhibit. Be sure to keep on the lookout for more videos in the near future. And until next time, see you out in the field.